Hey everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's just go ahead and take a look at new ECMAScript 2022 features, which will be coming in in the ES 2022 version. And there are quite some awesome features which are lined up for this new version of JavaScript. Let's just go ahead and discuss some of these features which will be landing in this new version. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. So the very first which is coming in in JavaScript ES 2022 is private class fields. Now so far there hasn't been an official method to hide JavaScript's class-based private variables. Now what do I mean by that? If you had a class, let's say box, and if you wanted to make this variable with the value of 200 as a private variable of this class itself, there was no way in JavaScript to do that yet. But this new specification, this new feature in JavaScript allows you to have that particular functionality. Let's take a look from this example, which I got from a blog post, which you should find the link for that in the description. Now this example, what it does is that it shows you a very simple instance of how you would use a private variable in JavaScript. Now, if you have a color button class, which extends HTML element, you can create a button like this. You can set its color, but you can also define an internal private field of this class and the way that starts is with a hash symbol so whenever you put a hash symbol in front of a property name this property automatically becomes a private property of this class that means when you create an object of this class you cannot access whether that's a read or write you cannot do anything within this particular object instance right from this particular object instance you can only modify these variables from the methods inside this particular class. Similarly, you can have private methods as well. You can say something on click and then you can define everything you want in this method. And again, this method could only be called from inside this class itself, not from the object in the outside world. And the only thing you have to do is put a hash symbol over here. Another addition with this is the use of static variables in javascript now earlier if you wanted to define a static variable or a static property on a class the way you would do it is you will see say something like the class name dot pi and then 3.14 or whatever the value you want to set but now instead of that you can use the static keyword itself and the static keyword was already available in typescript for some time but now this is available natively in javascript and then you can use the name of the variable which you want but still this could be accessed outside the class so if you want to restrict that access as well you can put a hash symbol which makes this a static variable and a private variable so now you can freely use it in any of the methods which you define over here. All right, the next feature, which probably is my favorite one as well out of everything coming in ES22 is the top level await. Now this has been available for some time. In fact, I guess we also did some videos on CodeDAM using top level await in Dino and Node.js. But what this essentially does is that it brings it officially into the JavaScript spec itself. That means the browsers, the front end can use it in their own scripts as well as Node.js can use it. And Node.js has been using it for some time, I guess now, but still it will be important to have this as an official spec in ES2022. Now a quick example for this could be something like just doing a await fetch call globally in the script itself. Earlier, if you wanted to do anything like this, so you could have something like d.text const my text, something like this, and maybe you can just feed it into Cheerio or any, I don't know, like a web scraping library or anything. So this could be a very valid, this could be all you had to do for a particular script kind of thing. This could be a very valid script once ES22 is 2022 is announced. But before that, what you had to do is you had to create an async function boot or engine or main or something, and then you would have to call this. So you could not use the await keyword without the async function, right? But now you can use it the top level without async keyword. Of course, you need await anyway if you use it in a regular function. You still need an async function for that. But now await is also just available on the top level scope. The next feature which we have in this new version of JavaScript is using dot at 
with arrays and the way this works is that let's say if you have an array of numbers one two three four five six right so you have six elements over here and now you want to access let's let's start it with zero so that it, there is no confusion so let's say if i want to access number three over here which also has an index of three so the way you would do it is with a notation like this but javascript now introduces another notation which is using array dot add and then not flat just add and then the index over here now the only difference between this versus this is that add also allows you to specify negative indexes that means i can specify negative one over here and i'll get six if i specify negative one over here this is obviously not the right way to write indices because index starts with zero always starts with zero so if i wanted to access six in a dynamic fashion what i had to do was do something like this so basically something like this so what your negative index was supposed to do was go over here with array.length plus this thing. So, I mean, technically speaking, <laughs> what the add thing does is that it automatically fills this array.length plus for you over here as if you were calling it via index notation. But nonetheless, it will help you make much more cleaner code if you have a lot of backward looking indexes calls. But yeah, I mean, not a very big addition but still javascript a lot of times you will see javascript borrowing features from a lot of other languages which makes it cleaner concise and doesn't hurt so it's fine another feature which we have another addition to javascript is the object dot has own function now i'm going to just give you a quick refresher on why we need this so if you have a function like this right a1 and b2 for example let's take an example of this so if you try to console log this function sure you will get just a couple of these couple of properties but what you will also get let me just go ahead and quickly show you this if i console log object over here and if i run this script over here we get just these two couple of properties but if i try to do something like console log object dot two string you still see that we get this as a function that means even though this is not visible on the object itself this property right here exists right so sometimes what happens is that you need to figure out that whether a property which you're calling for example this property you're calling whether that exists on the object itself that is on the main chain of the object or on some nested prototypal chain in javascript now if you want to know how prototypes and prototypal chains work in javascript probably a good idea to watch some of my video i have covered this i know either on youtube or in code dams one of the code dams full stack learning path courses on javascript but we'd go into depth of this but anyway a short way to demonstrate is this if i have two strings set as 100 you're gonna see now we have a problem now i mean not exactly a problem but now two string returns hundred instead of that function so the way i can verify whether this two string exists on the main object or not is by using this new thing called object dot has own and the way i would do this is something like object dot has own then i'm going to pass the object and i'm going to pass this particular thing so now when i would run this and of course this fails right now because it's not in the spec right now but maybe four or ten months down the line when this is released what you should be able to see is that this would return me false over here and if i uncomment this then this would return me true so this just says that hey is this property which you specified over here an actual property of the object itself if yes then return me true otherwise return me false now if you have been around a while you know that this was already possible in a way with something known as has own property object dot has one property and then the key which you want to check so if i pass in two string over here it will pretty much work in the same way like i mentioned you earlier with that uh, you know that newer syntax but the reason we need this newer syntax with object dot has own and passing object in this is because i mean this pretty much suffers with the same thing you can implement this yourself and this is not protected that means this can be overwritten and this will always return false even though this time this should return true so this is why the team decided that hey we'll just create an object that has own on the object itself object class or object data type itself instead of relying on the 
object prototypal chain which might get overridden right another feature which you have over here is the ability to have starting and ending indexes from your regular expression execution now let's take a look at this little example over here we have a string and we have a regular expression which includes this as a capturing group mango keyword as the capturing group so you want to capture this particular thing when we run the match all so right now if you run this though the thing which you'll see in fact we can even do it right now and let's hope our console so shows us all the data so right now you can see it outputs the same thing it will output your matches and it will give you an index of where it happened right where the match was found but it does not give you the starting and the ending indexes there are two matches over here and you can see that we in fact get two matches over here but the index information is not complete as per se so what this new feature would allow us to do is pass on a new flag called a d flag which would enable this matching indexes and of course this will not work right now again because this feature is not shipped but this should work start working in four to eight to 12 months how many months it takes for them to ship this and make it available within node and browsers and everything but the moment you do this this output would convert into something like this now it will show you an array of indices which contains from the starting point to the ending point of where the keyword is found in your regular expression match so yep that's pretty much it for this video hopefully you are excited about some of these new features of es 2022 if you are let me know in the comments below what you think about this we're going to be covering them in a lot more details in code dams full stack and front end course on javascript so make sure you check that out if you want to stay updated and relevant with the recent updates on these learning paths and on these courses that is all for this one Make sure you like and subscribe the video to stay updated with anything happening in the JavaScript and the web development world in general. I'm going to see you in the next video really soon. If you're still watching this video, make sure you comment down in the comment section. I watched this video till the end. Also, if you're not part of CodeDamp's Discord community, you're missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code. You already know the drill. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much for watching.